This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. Today's show is going to be dedicated to the 40th anniversary of WBKB-TV and I'm very excited to have two of the original founders, originators of the station. I have Tom Scanlon and Tom Dysinger. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I'm so excited to have both of you here and I know it's been a whirlwind week for you. You've been going everywhere and doing everything. But before we get started um, with the history of the station, I just want to say that, you know, it's just been a wonderful 40 years for the station to be in our community. Very, very proud to be associated with WBKB-TV. We do the local news and so much more. When I think of the careers that got launched through the station and yours. Ours, yeah. Yours. Um, you know, the economic impact that the station has. It has a viable payroll here. You know, we sell advertising. We help businesses succeed and grow. Um, you know, people start here as newscasters and move on. It's just been a wonderful thing, and I'm so excited to have both of you here today. Thank you. That's that's much different than when we were here. They yeah, make money. Yeah, 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 they do. <laughs> yeah, we make money. Yes, we do. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, we do. Well, start me out, guys, and tell me about the station and how it got started. I well, uh, I would say that uh, probably its very, very early origins was a research project I did at Michigan State in 1966 when I graduated. Wow. Called Growth and Development of UHF Broadcasting. And I, I really studied how the channels were assigned and where they were assigned. And I just thought, I said, hmm, VHF Channel 11 is assigned, allocated to Alpena, and it was never built. No one ever applied for it. Ah. So while we were in the service, you know, I, I ran this operation over in Germany, and these guys worked with me and uh, kicked the idea around and they said, hey, if you ever do that thing, let me know. I filed it in the back of my head and I said, okay. So when I was assigned to Indianapolis in the Air Force, um, I began working on it, came up here to Alpena and uh, met with Harvey Klan, who owned WHSB. Right. Said, Harvey, if I put an antenna on top of your tower on Manning Hill, would that be okay? Can I rent it from you? He said, Bam, okay, but let, let's get the permit first. You, you apply and if you get your permit, we'll talk. It took us almost three years to get the permit. Wow. Because we had competition from Bruce Friel, who also applied for Channel 11. Ah. He was in the development business, and the development business cratered. Okay. And so he no longer had money, and he said, just buy me out for my expenses. So we did, and we thought we'd get the permit right away. Along comes a UHF station out of uh. Traverse City and goes, not so fast. Your signal is going to have economic impact against us. That's a That's a way to stop someone from building stations then. That's long since gone away, that, that regulation. But it, it held us up for about two and a half years. Wow. So I got the permit. We got, we got the permit in uh, August, July of 1974. And I let these three guys know right away. We stayed in touch during this whole period of time. And uh, the rest is history. They moved up here. We all moved physically, you know, bought houses, rent houses, whatever, went on the payroll our own payroll, and uh, we built a station. And 13 months later, thanks to his effort in the engineering department, um, who did an awful lot of the physical construction, off we went. Amazing. Okay, sounds kind of easy from his part to your part. It wasn't easy. I'm no, sure there, was a, there was a lot to go through to put the facility together and get the building built and get the tower up down at Hubbard Lake. And uh, uh, I just can't say enough about this guy, what, what he did, because he started it. And had we not known him in Germany and had worked for him in Germany, we wouldn't probably have had the confidence in him to make that transition and come up here and uh, move our lives, move our families. And, yes. uh, you know, through that, I got a 47-year career in broadcasting, uh, retired recently from the business. So as, as many people do, they, they come to the small market, they move on, move on up, uh, so to speak, and the rest is history. So give me an idea what the station looked like back then, what services you oh offered, my. where your reach, all those things. Well, we just recently, as uh, many of you know, went through this transition to digital. Yes. And the joke uh, for me was that I was here for the transition to analog, <laughs> which really analog is how television started. Uh -huh, but uh -huh. uh, but we, when we went on the air, we were using a lot of film and slides okay. for, for the video. So uh, news was shot. Uh, we were one of the early stations with what we called mini cams, which was the first 
ability to go out and actually shoot news on tape. We, we were actually the first station in the state of Michigan to go 100% video news coverage. Wow. Uh, others had begun to go that way, but they still had 16 millimeter film as a backup, including the Traverse City stations. Wow. But we went pure videotape, and we kind of bragged about that. We yes, said, I would too. Yeah. It was kind of cool, and it was three quarter inch, and uh, which was an old tape format, and we also had what uh, a two inch tape format for the uh, programming. But it, it, was, it was quite antiquated, and, uh, but we did it. We made it work. We did. So how many staff members did you have when you initially opened? I want to say 26. Yeah, about 26. Oh, I, you yeah, did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to just mention one other thing. During that one year period in which we built the station, mm -hmm. these, these guys who were department heads, salaried, this guy goes down, takes, drives down to poor mountain outside of Roanoke, Virginia, goes up to, what is that mountain, 5,000 feet high. Poor mountain. Yeah, poor mountain. Disassembles a transmitter, puts it in a truck, and he and, was it Harold Sprayberry? Gene Sprayberry. Gene, Gene Sprayberry. Drive it back here, go down to Hubbard Lake, and reassemble it. That was, a, we bought a used transmitter. Wow. Our switcher came from a factory outside of Toronto, and Larry Elliott drove the news wagon over there, got the switcher, and brought it back. So we did a lot of the actual hands-on nuts and bolts work. And Larry Elliott, another name you just threw out, another person who started here, got his start here and went Absolutely. on to wonderful, fantastic things, traveled all over the world, was on the Titanic, did all the fun stuff that could possibly be done anywhere. We're going to see Larry this afternoon. Oh, yay! Yep, down in Flint. Do you know from the, from the Edmund Fitzgerald tragedy, right. which happened during those initial right. years, we covered that as, as, as hard as we could, as best we could. Larry went on doing a lot of the coverage. He went on to become, I think, one of the founding members of he the did. board of the Maritime Museum yep. and uh, has been very, very instrumental in making that happen as he well. He has been, yes, he has been. We had no live capabilities either. Everything had to be recorded in okay. the field and brought back and edited and then put on the air. So we couldn't go live. Wow. But we, we could go live out of here. Yeah. And that was, and, and that was a, a really, really big deal. Oh, yeah. When the KC-135 went down, and uh, that's an airplane. Yes, airplane. <laughs> just just between here and Oscoda. I remember. We got these guys got into the woods before even the Air Force security team got there. CBS had two guys come up here. They camped out in our front office, and, and I remember. I, I think Peter, you interviewed one of the CBS news people, and he was you know relating. You know, so we were getting the benefit of their expertise as well, wow. telling the local audience what was going on down there with that train. I remember walking through that wreckage before the search and rescue people got the people out. It was one of those things that's ingrained in your oh, memory yes. forever. Yeah. Well, we've got about one more minute left, so I know okay. you have lots of fun things that you're going to be doing now. So after this, you're going to Indianapolis and meeting up with all of your buddies from we're the We're going to meet some military. other uh, fellows from the TV station in Germany and reunite with them. And they all work for us right there in that station over there. That's amazing. Yep. We'll have a wonderful trip and thank you so much for making uh, time for us today. Thanks thank for uh, thank having you. us. It's an honor to be here. And I'll be right back with Kurt Smith and Peter Newman following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My next two guests are also part of our 40th anniversary show for WBKB TV. I have Peter Newman and Curtis Smith. Hi and welcome. Hi. Hi, Nance. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Kurt, I'm going to start with you because, first of all, you were my neighbor for many years, and then <laughs> we got to know each other. Then I came to work here, and we've been friends for many years. And, many, many years. You know, I've heard the stories through the years about the station and how it started, but it's so exciting to have the originators of the station, how you all worked together in Germany and brought it to Alpena. And you were general manager here for how many years, Kurt? Seventeen. For 17 years. That was after, I mean, I, we all left by 1981, and I came back in, in 1988 to the station as a general manager. And you started a lot of programs here, with, um, um, broadcasting classes in the schools and all the fun things that never would have been here had not it been for you, and you actually retired from that job. and. Um, after years of being in the broadcasting business, this was a wonderful springboard for you and, and your family, too. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the opportunity to come to Alpena with, with Tom and uh, Peter and, and, and Dice, uh, you know, that all materialized in Germany. Uh, the, the, the story that, the, one of the stories that I like to tell is that uh, Scanlon and I are sitting in the control room at the TV station in Germany, and uh, he, because all of this started at Michigan State with his uh, schoolwork mm -hmm. stuff. 
and I'm from Flint originally, and he said, well, Kurt, you're from Michigan. What do you know about Alpena? And I said, I've never been up there. All I know is it's cold and they get a ton of snow. And he said, well, I'm going to build a TV station up there when we get out. You want to go? And I said, yep, oh, give me a call. That's he awesome. did, and here, here we are. And Peter, what was your involvement in the beginning and the start and today, until today? Well, I remember uh, at the very beginning, um, we had an office, uh, Tom and I, Tom Scanlon and I were in an office on, at 123 Water Street. Okay. And one of the things that I was tasked with was to do what's called community ascertainment, where you, where you determine what the needs of the community are, and in your FCC application, license application, um, you profess how you're going to uh, help meet those needs of the community. And so that was a really good insight into the, into the, into the community as a whole, the broader community of, of even northeast, in, uh, northeast uh, Michigan. And um, you learn things that are important to people and, and what they think are the priorities. And so that helped us uh, shape our coverage a little bit toward those kinds of issues. Okay. Uh, so that was the very early thing, but I think you know, you look at this building now and you forget that it was just a vacant lot. And it's so hard to you were that. doing things like making runs for supplies. I mean, you were doing everything that ultimately had nothing to do with journalism, but made journalism possible in the end. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, it really was. So after you left here, where did you go and what did you do? I went, my wife is from Indiana. Okay. And so. Um, uh, shortly after Tom Scanlon left, uh, I took a job as executive producer at uh, WISH TV in Indianapolis. Okay. Stayed there for a couple of, two years, two and a half years, and then I went to Phoenix as executive producer there. Ooh, Phoenix, yay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, great town. And Kurt, something <clears throat> that I know you were instrumental in and, and that I'm proud of too for this station, it was always an integral part of our community, always lent itself out there, always covered the stories, always sponsored the events, always invited people into the station to tell their story and, a, and the broadcast area kept increasing increasing and I that's something that I'm still proud of today that that's something that we do we're really a, an important part of this community and and the and the whole community is is really Northeast Michigan and that comes that goes right back to Peter and you know the fact that that whole the whole news operation and the concept that we need to do the ascertainments that he talked about that's really what guided all of that and you know, having somebody at a startup situation like this with a television station with his background and professionalism that we built on, and that's what we saw the fruits of or see the fruits of today, is that, you know, he had the insight that this wasn't just going to be Alpena News coverage. You know, we have Atawas and Ascoda and, and Rogers City and Mayo and, and all parts in between and all parts that, in that has between. come back to surface. I see that in the open now. And Peter's actual original open was from Alpena to Tawas City and all of the great Northeast. Good evening. And, and I see that's incorporated a little bit back into the opening now in a little different way. Well, you know, I, I think that even though the communities may be separated by, by forests, um, and the, the economic basis may be a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, from community to community. People want to learn how the other half lives, yes. how other communities are solving problems. And, and I, think, um, I think the work that Kurt has done as general manager, and I told him that this morning as we were driving around, is, that is, is really as an exemplary broadcaster because it is a calling. It's a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's not just another job that you're here to improve the quality of life for, for the people you serve. And I think that has to be the big, bold headline for, for people in our field. It's not always, and in many cases it's not, but I think for all of us who built the television stations, that, that's what we felt then and I think we still feel mm -hmm. it now, even in retirement. And I agree, and um, Cher Allen, our general manager now, she feels the same way. She, she says yes to everything involves <coughs> the station and the community and allows the, the news team to go out and do their job and bring back the stories, um, you know, help they sponsor wonderful, fun events that never have been done before. So it's really neat to see the station keep evolving and what we do. And you know, um, they work well with the radio stations, with mm -hmm. the newspaper, with all the other media. So we all kind of band together to make sure that all the things that are happening in northeastern Michigan are covered because, you know, we are geographically, you know, a little bit uh, handicapped here. 
but you would never know it if you watch our newscast or see the people that advertise on our station and, mm -hmm. and see the growth of the business in the area. And I mean, you must be surprised when you come back, even if you've been here just a year ago, the changes in our community. And I think that the station is a, mm -hmm. is a big part of all of that. Absolutely. Except the owl was closed. But, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be reopening. We'll be back. <laughs> Good, and hopefully they'll be advertising with us. But um, Kurt, too, I know that um, as we talked earlier too about the the people who have launched their careers here, I wish I wish we would have kept track of that through the years because I know I go to the Detroit market and see Jason Carr. Jason started here. Dan Springer and I did our very first MBA telethon here. Um, Dan is on Fox News. I see him all over mm -hmm. the world covering stories everywhere, and I'm sure there's a lot more people who've gotten their their springboard here and gone yeah. on to bigger and better things. Yeah, we, there, are, there are several people in the Detroit area, it's some behind the scenes. Uh, Colleen Clement was a producer yes. at one of the stations in Detroit. Uh, lost track of, of a lot of them, but uh, Lansing, yeah, the, the whole and state area Miami, and outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think it presents some, some real challenges for a smaller market television <clears throat> station to retain people and hold them, knowing that there's a, there's a limitation to what the, the salaries will allow, what the economy uh, mm -hmm. will allow. Uh, because especially you lose, you lose the knowledge that you gain in those two, two years or however long a person is there, uh, and you're really starting from scratch, and the new person doesn't get the benefit of that knowledge. Um, you know, how long does it take to, to, to figure out how to get across town or how to get someplace or what's the quickest way right. or who to call? You know, and you know. I think of Mary Centella. I mean, she was here right. for years and everyone knew and loved Mary. It was hard for her to go out and go anywhere and do anything. Yeah. And there's a couple other people that I want to mention that, uh, that left the station, went on to other places that were part of the original group of pro really professional people that after I came back to the station, I was fortunate enough to be contacted by both of these guys who wanted to come back to Alpena, come back to the station. Bob Race, yes. uh, our production manager, operations manager uh, that, that we lost recently, and Jim Marr, yep. uh, who was chief engineer at one point. And uh, we were able to get, the, both of those guys came back. So yes. the last 17 years I was here, I had those two guys in here helping make it as professional as it was when we started. It's really hard to talk about Bob, but yes, he's very, very missed here, and yeah. I still hear his voice on commercials, and it, that was a tough thing for all of us, but yeah. he was. He was so professional and so easy and wonderful to work with, and he, he left his mark, and he'll be here forever. Yeah. Yep. Well, we're out of time. He's flashing me a sign, so I want to thank both of you very much for being here. You bet. Thank um, you. Thanks, thanks for, for calling me us. so that we can tape this show, because hopefully we'll see you all in 40 more years. <laughs> Wouldn't that thanks. be wonderful? That would be, that would be one. <laughs> that would be, be remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both very much. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joint and following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. My name is uh, Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm uh, pleased to have with me today uh, Nick Briggy, who's our newest, uh, our new uh, director of facilities management. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, Nick and his team have been involved in a lot of work around campus this summer, and uh, why don't you share with the audience some of those major projects? Well, I started at a very exciting time for ACC. Uh, I got to oversee the final stages of the EPTC project, which included a solar uh, array installation and a wind turbine installation. So two very kind of fun projects that uh, will give back to the school as well as to uh, uh, reduce some energy costs for ACC. So um, that was an exciting project. Um, EPTC would be Electrical Power Technology Center. That's correct. The Ferris Worth Center. That's correct. The yeah. newest building. Yes, our newest building. Something we're very proud of and, and you had a substantial piece in that at the end. Absolutely. What else is going on? Um, well, ACC has been uh, very active in energy management and keeping the, the costs of heating down. So one of the projects I've been working on lately is uh, refurbishing the, the boiler system in the Natural Resources Center. Just sort of uh, picking up where my predecessor left off and in, in making some upgrades to the facilities and, and keeping energy costs down with more efficient boilers and, and more efficient heating for those buildings. So, um, Also building a new classroom for the Marine Technology Program. 
uh, trying to expand that, give them their own space and uh, their own tank to, to work their robots. So two big projects for the summer for me. That's really neat. The, uh, uh, it's, it's nice of you to, to mention your predecessor, Tom Ludwig. He was a, a, a champion of sustainability and energy conservation, did a number of, as you know, a number of really positive things in that regard for the college. And uh, you're continuing on in his footsteps. Uh, the uh, marine tech program, that, um, what do you foresee going into that space? I was there today earlier and I saw there was a partition up and it looked really interesting. Yeah, there's going to be uh, a room dedicated for CAD and, um, and the computer side of it. And on the other side of, of that, there's a lab attached to the, to the space where there'll be a, a, a large water tank for doing some robot testing as well as a continuous workbench for um, for the students to do their soldering and any kind of lab activities that they have to do there. Uh, it's, it's a good wide open space where they can um, work on the trainers. So there's hydraulic training units going in that space as well as electrical training units and some other uh, robotic simulators um, that all go into the same area, one uh, confined space for all of the marine tech programs. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, the, uh, um, that program is, is one of the, the new programs we, we have at the college. There's been a lot of excitement and support around it. Um, it's inhabiting or coming into the space that was vac vacated by Utility Tech when it went into the Electrical Power Technology Center. So, you know, that cause, that chain of events makes sense. And uh, it's nice to see that happen because it's real prime instructional space. So tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a local guy. I grew up in a small village called Black River, about 20 miles south of Alpena. I graduated from Alcona High School and then went to Alpena Community College. I started my undergraduate uh, there and um, completed an associate's degree and transferred those credits to Kettering University down in Flint and finished my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Uh, after that, I, I, I got a job in Oscoda for a company called ITT Industries. Mm -hmm. uh, worked there for about 13 years. Um, they merged with a co another company called Cooper Standard. And while I was employed there, I, f I finished my master's degree at the University of Michigan in their Flint campus. So uh, that was an MBA program. Um, and since then, I, I found the opportunity to come back to Alpena Community College and uh, I remembered my time spent there and, and enjoyed it very much and, and I'm happy to be a part of that team now uh, working towards the um, higher education and, and contributing back to the community in, as a whole. Um, I'm also now studying for my doctoral uh, degree through Walden University um, which will be in management with a, with a uh, spec specific focus on finance so all right yeah. well that's uh, that is you know I, having grown up in Alcona County I'm very familiar with Black River it is a small small town lovely little place yes it is and uh, graduate of Alcona High and that's a that's a wonderful school as well so uh, um, in Kettering and University of Michigan Flint and now a doctoral uh, journey. That's, that's very commendable. I'd like to congratulate you. you on that. Hey, how far are you uh, into your doctorate? Uh, I'm two semesters in right now, so it's an 80 credit program and I've got uh, just over 10 credits now. Okay. This. Just, just getting started. Yep. Do you have a dissertation you have to do at the end of it? Yeah, and it's, uh, that's a good portion of the credits. There's 25 credits towards dissertation and once I'm published then I'll be granted the, uh, the full degree, so. Outstanding. Well, so um, what would be your vision uh, uh, for things that uh, ACC, the area of uh, facilities that you manage and control, where do you see opportunities and things that you might like to work on or, uh, you know, places where you see, I, I think we could do this? Um, there's, we've, we've worked on the grounds quite a bit this summer. And I'd like to continue that and, and get a, a solid plan maybe over the next few years that we can 
really upgrade the uh, the landscaping and and trees and shrubs and and the like, uh, as well as continuing to install energy efficient improvements with lighting and heat with with all the buildings. So there's there's still some high energy usage fixtures that that could be upgraded to uh, more efficient styles, um, and just continuing the sustainability program there at the college. Your 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 teams work on the grounds. I, I I've noticed. Um, and uh, a lot of people have noticed, and it, it really adds a lot. The, it's surprising visitors to campus, pr prospective new students, how influenced they are by how, how uh, nicely the grounds look. Yes, um, and the volunteers uh, within the community who plant the flowers, um, they deserve a lot of credit for that too. They, uh, they put a lot of hard work into it and it really shows. It really does. That would be Dr. Stibitz and his team uh, on the flowers, and uh, um, yeah, that's part of the community part of the community college. We're uh, uh, blessed with having that in Alpena, and uh, we're glad to have you on board, Nick. Um, and we wish you best of luck. Thank you very much. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.